morning, thanks for tuning in. Today is an indoor gardening project and as you can see, I'm getting ready to start some seeds. So first I'm just gonna show you the different supplies that I use and then I'll walk you through the process and show you everything that I'm starting for fall. So this year I ordered kind of a kit from Gardener Supply and I'm gonna use their seed starting mix and I'm going to use their seed starter kits. Um, so what this includes is the actual tray and a reservoir um, and everything I need to start my seeds. Now I also ordered these wooden pegs so I can mark what everything is and then I also ordered a heating mat which I'll show you when I'm done planting. A lot of the seeds that I'll be planting today I get from Johnny's and the reason that I like Johnny's not only because they're organic is they give a ton of information on the back of their seed packets as far as how you're supposed to start your seeds and what are the best growing conditions for your plants. On the back they'll tell you how long it takes to germinate, what conditions you need, the height of the plant, and how you're supposed to harvest it along with other information regarding diseases and pests. So it's a lot of great information compared to some of the other brand of seed packets that I bought. This is how I store my seeds. This is actually an art kit that I got off of Amazon. And what it is, is it's a plastic container and as you can see it's divided into four different sections. So the way that I currently have these sorted is the first section is all of my flower seeds. Um, I'm going to be starting a few seeds for flowers today that I'll plant in the fall, but most of these I'll be starting in the spring for next year's perennial garden. The next section is all of the vegetable seeds that I'm going to be planting this fall. Um, beans, I have storage carrots in here, kale, cabbage, um, anything for my fall season planting. The next section is actually seeds that I have already for my spring garden next year. So I have a variety of pumpkins, I already have some oregano in here, um, some thyme, some peas, um, a couple left over from this year, but this is basically some things that I have ordered this year for next year already. Um, and then the last section, I saved all of my flower tags for the perennials and annuals that I planted this year, and I have them all sorted for my house and my garden here that is next to my photography studio, just so that I can reference back um, how things grow and plan ahead for next year. Um, so again, this was called an art kit, uh, or art bin, it says art bin right on the top, and I got this off of Amazon, it was probably Oh, it's under 20 bucks. And so it's just a real nice way that I can store and organize all of my seeds. So I went ahead and planted one of my trays up already with some foxgloves and delphiniums that I'm going to plant out in the cottage garden this fall. From Floret Flower, I planted the Camelot Cream Foxglove. And from Johnny's, I did the Cafe Cream Foxglove and then the Magic Fountains Cherry Blossom Delphinium. So I did eight cells of each and Two of them I double seeded and one of them I single seeded. The Floret Flower one, I just put one seed of each in because it's a really low quantity, but I wanted to make sure that I got a really good germination rate for these. Before I start planting up the second seed tray, I thought I would just show you all of the pieces that are included with it. Again, this was a kit that I purchased from Gardener Supply, and in that kit, it came with two of the starting trays that hold 24 cells each, and then a bag of their seed starting mix. So in each kit, there are a few different pieces. This is the platform tray. These are the cells that you plant in. This bottom part is the reservoir tray. In between here is the wicking mat, which I will show you how that works. And then this is the dome that you use to cover it that keeps the humidity inside. So how this goes together is you have the reservoir tray on the bottom going to put in the platform. Your wicking mat is going to set in here so that you have one edge that goes right down into the water. This is going to water your seeds from the bottom. Then your cells sit on top and the dome goes on top of that. And then that selfs waters so that you don't have to water from the top and wash your seeds away. And this dome keeps all the humidity in so they don't dry out. The second seed tray that I'm going to start today is going to be vegetables. So both of these are from Johnny's. I'm going to do cauliflower and broccoli. And I'm gonna do eight cells of each, and then I'm gonna leave eight cells open so that I can save those for a couple other vegetables that I want to try where the seeds haven't arrived yet. 
So how I prepare my soil is that I put a good portion into a bowl and then I pre-moisten it. You want the soil damp, but when you squeeze it, you don't want to be able to wring water out of it. So I mix it really well until it is a nice consistency. And then I just go ahead and fill my cells. You want them nice and full. And I usually tap the soil in there just a little bit because you don't want the soil to settle a lot or your seeds are going to settle and then they're gonna be covered with too much dirt that they don't get the proper light to germinate. my cells are full of the soil I need to make little holes for the seeds to go in and I usually just use one of my little labeling pegs and I just make a little bit of a hole because you don't want to cover your seeds very much or the light can't get to them and I just push a little bit of dirt to the side right in the center and that is where my seed is going to go So for the broccoli and the cauliflower, I'm actually sowing two seeds per cell. And once I see them start to germinate, if both of them germinate, I'll thin them out. I tend to save the little two to four inch plastic containers that my annual flowers come in. And once these seedlings have sprouted and have their true leaves, I will transplant the seedlings into those containers before they'll actually get planted into the garden. So once all my seeds are planted, I'm gonna use my marker again and just lightly put a little bit of dirt over top of the hole where I have my seeds planted. So the last step before I put my seeds on the heat mat is to fill up the reservoir with water. You want to fill it up so it is just under your platform. And this usually takes about eight cups of water. I also go ahead and pour water on top of the wick that way it starts soaking up the moisture. Then you just sit your seed tray right on top and cover it with the dome and you're good to go. The last thing I need to do is just set the trays on my grow mat. This particular one also came from Gardener Supply. It's a 20 by 20 inch, so both of my seed trays are gonna fit right on the same mat. And to give my seed trays a little bit of extra light, I have this LED hooked up above them. This just came from Amazon and it has four wands that I spread out over the seed trays. So this will give it enough light until they germinate. Once the seeds start to germinate, I'm going to wait till they get their true leaves and then I will uncover them. So now all that's left is to just cross my fingers and hope they grow. I'll make sure to update you in a future video. So stay tuned. Bye.